consistency and all that. One second. Uh. Alright, there's another fan that used to blow hot air, doesn't know more. Alright. I was trying to rest and the spirit was like, nah, I need to make this video so that um, certain fears get uh, put to rest so that everybody's not so... Uh, misled and um, blind basically so um, I'm making sure I get these words right from the spirit and I was praying on it for a little bit before um, sitting down to make this video all right so Satan is not an angel of light. That doesn't make any sense. Because the scripture says Jesus Christ was the is the light in the darkness. And there is no darkness in him. So if Satan came from... So that should lay that to rest. A lot of... Um, professed believers appear as light and then they lead you down a wider path now the scripture says narrow is the path that leads to eternal life to your um, first teaspoon of heaven wide is the path that leads to destruction so I have um, talked to Satan many times and I've been tempted by him, and I have um, learned that uh, he is uh, terrified, and um, here's how our interactions go. Because <clears throat> the um, spirit, my father, God, Jesus Christ, um, told me he didn't want me to preach like everybody else. He wants me to clarify things for people. It's usually like this. Are you okay? And then Satan's like, what's going to happen to me? And I'm like, You're still in a human body. You wouldn't be talking to you unless I had love for you. And then he says, but we don't play like we used to. You're not in love with me like you used to be. And I'm like, I still love you. You can come home anytime. I still take time to uh, check on you and tell you, read your Bible and stay in the spirit. I just... I gotta block you out sometimes because you get yourself all riled up and confused about things. And then he comes back with usually, so you still think you're God. And I'm like, I can only tell you what the spirit tells me to tell you. You're lying. And this is usually when um, the spirit jumps in, the spirit's like, he's lying to you, don't believe him. And I'm like, okay. And the spirit's like, just wait, let him talk. And I'm like, all right. And he says, you haven't shown any results. You haven't given me what you promised me. I had to do this, I had to do that. And I'm like, wait a second. You made those choices. I was trying to help you. I've gone out of my way to help you. And then he says, have you ever thought that maybe you might be in spirits? Like, you're not saying, just let him talk. And I'm like, all right. And I'm like, I 
can only tell you what the Spirit tells me to tell you. And then I'll usually quote scripture. And it's like, no, because scripture says, stop quoting scripture. I don't believe that. How, how, how am I supposed to communicate with you? The Bible is the truth. You lie. Um, and then he laughs. And then he says, I'm as close to Satan as anyone could be. And I was the Spirit's like, see, he's already convicting himself. And I just sit quiet. And I let him talk a lot. I usually just let him talk. <clears throat> and it always turns into, um, he's not happy about not being the center of attention. And he was under the impression that following me would automatically get him all of these things that were promised to me that I was happy to share with him. And exactly, I'm telling the truth. There's a reason I'm not looking in the camera. When you um, delve into a subject like this, you don't want to scare people. You want to alleviate their fears. And he was, he was like, not me, baby, not me. I have a clean slate. And I said, exactly. Now you're starting to get it. And then I'm like, and then I, I go back and forth with him. I'm, I love him. There are things about him that I see a lot of um, hurt. That's what I see in him, a lot of hurt and a lot of fear. And I'm like, do you even believe in God? And he says, I believe there's something out there. And I'm like, and I've already proven myself to him. He's already kneeled. So I mean, it's, it's not a question. It wasn't really a vendetta or anything against um, Satan. Because Satan is not what people think. It's not, He's not this rival of mine or my equal. And I've known him in a whole bunch of different lifetimes. Multiple people have been Satan. Females, males. There is a... Um, a certain darkness that anybody in the Holy Spirit will detect in a person. And it can be very apparent or it can be just kind of slightly apparent. I can't really be around darkness too much, so it's really strained our relationship. <clears throat> and the spirits that are flowing through people's lives and things like that aren't from him. People haven't read the Bible. God has tormenting spirits. Satan is anybody that is not following the Holy Spirit. When Jesus Christ was saying, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven, he was talking specifically to people around him. Or when he called, uh, he said, everybody right here is good except for this devil. He was talking specifically to a spirit, a person. And it's kind of just, if you are following the Holy Spirit, you will be filled, or trying at least. I mean, every, nobody's perfect, I get that, as far as human beings. But if you're trying to please God, light will be inside of you. If you are not trying to please God, you're gonna have darkness in God's eyes. And um, our conversations have always gone back and forth like this. Because his definition of um, 
holiness is different from God's definition of holiness and his thought process is that he shouldn't have to do anything and that he should just be rewarded. He likes to play a lot is what he does. He likes to um, drama. He likes drama. If it's exciting and it amuses him and it's entertaining, then he he's very interested in it. If it's about discipline and carrying your cross and um, following the Holy Spirit even when you don't want to, he's not very um, reliable for that. And I tried training him and I tried um, letting him uh, be a part of, I've been trying to find a way for a long time to let him be a part of um, my family because he's part of my family. Like, there's no way if something came from God as far as um, it was Everything was created through Jesus Christ, for Jesus Christ, and by Jesus Christ. That <clears throat> Jesus Christ doesn't have love for that um, spirit. And um, I know people have written their own theories and things like that. I mean, Lucifer in itself is a Latin term. So that, that should tell you a lot right there as far as the translations and <clears throat> what language uh, the Bible was first written in and then exactly truth. And um, <clears throat> the war in heaven is more about um, and Jesus Christ said and the violent try to take it by force. So, <clears throat> that's, that's in the scripture. It's not really um, violence like you're thinking. It's more about conniving and a misery loves company type of uh, thought process. <clears throat> so there's disciples I have that um, are trying really, really hard. And then there's people that are trying to say this whole walk by faith and all of this, like I've experienced it all. I've seen people fall away. I've, been, I've seen people led away, but they have the choice to do that. and then they leave the spirit. <clears throat> so then God views them, there's darkness in you now. So and I've experienced it cuz it's all fallen on me um trying to allow certain people into my life and help them learn the way. Um, the whole, uh, how to be happy, following Jesus, and not these doctrines and things that are taught that will eventually lead nowhere. Because God will be telling you to do something, you'll go to a doctrine to get out of it, and then you're just going to, turn dark inside the church <clears throat> and I view the Christians in third world countries as more persecuted as having a lot more opportunity to grow their faith and be stronger Christians with a stronger relationship with Jesus Christ I do so one of the greatest blessings I could give my people is simulate what our people in other countries are going through so that when we all come together, we have that commonality. 
we all went to war against different things. In this country, we went to war against basically a lot of um, not being able to not be impacted by a, a lifestyle and the things that come with it and it making it harder for those that want to feel um, closer to God and not have distractions and temptations. In third world countries and things like that, it may not be as in your face. It's still there, but it's not um, an acceptable everyday this is life type of uh, mentality that uh, we in America are um, kind of uh, in every day. And <clears throat> there's people in caves and I'm not gonna get on that soapbox, but <clears throat> the misconception that God created a spirit to challenge and um, give this spirit free reign over the earth is wrong. Jesus Christ said right now, Satan is the God of this world. He meant humans. He meant man. Anybody that is not trying to please God. That's what he meant. And the scripture talks about things that have already occurred as far as what happened to Jerusalem. Um, if you want to talk about Revelation. And um, a certain leader back then and his followers to kind of um, give hope to his people that, hey, it's gonna be all right, I'm gonna take care of this. And then it was taken care of. And it's not to scare anybody. People don't have to think that worshiping any God is going to get them a happy life because it won't. Jesus said, if you love me, obey me. God's form of worship is obedience. Now, if you want to go to the Old Testament, he talked about sacrifices with wine. What he was trying to do is get people to relax. But <clears throat> It was even like sacrifice the one. But um, seriously, God um, is pretty not worried about man's opinion too much. And um, <clears throat> that's what's missing in what's being taught today is that he's God. It's not all right to disobey him. And I witnessed and saw how um, Satan does things through other people. And it stems from fear. Nobody wanted to believe Jesus Christ was coming back. Nobody wanted to believe that God was going to judge them and that there was going to be accountability. So what they did is despite the... Um, miraculous occurrences and dreams and coincidences and things that happened, they convinced other people that that's not real, that they're crazy or that they um, were being misled because life got harder for them. And they would say, well, if he's him, why are you always looking like this? Why is this always going on? And if people were in the spirit, they would say, 
I have joy and I have peace. And I would have them preach to the ones that were saying all of this. But as people um, let the spirit and they had to do it in their own strength, the people that were trying to drag them down started making sense to them. And as soon as humans start making sense is when I usually get on guard. And the spirit kind of um, lets me simulate it so that I remember how um, humans uh, view things. <clears throat> but a lot of times God will just allow you to see what you're capable of in your own strength. And it's gotten so dark spiritually that a lot of people just gave up. That was predicted. It was... But you can always get back up. And the reason my messages are so harsh is because uh, God wanted me to preach things that no one can get around. The voice of truth. That I'll look in the camera for. And <clears throat> if you are in a human body, you can be an angel or you can be a demon. And God does not have to throw people into a CGI, like you can only imagine nightmare situation in order to um, remove your desire for destroying yourself. It can be very, very gentle. It can be simply you feeling like there's no other way out. <clears throat> and then clean you up and then but so many people have been pulled out and cleaned up just to hit a church, pull out some people from a celebrate recovery or um, just the congregation because they met a, a spouse or, or they think they met a spouse. And then now two have returned um, back to what they were pulled out of. You can't keep going back and forth like that. And what people don't understand is God gives you the ability to believe based on the decisions you're going to make with it. That's why some believe and some don't. They think it's their intellect. It's not. So what you do is you strengthen the ones that believe. And that's where um, the American church is kind of um, not doing too well in that capacity. Because everyone's going expecting to get showered with blessings without serving their king. And then get to heaven where they're not going to have to serve their king and if you don't know Jesus Christ and you don't know what he likes and what he doesn't like and things like that you won't be spending much time with him and that was kind of the whole point too because Jesus Christ is more like and if you've ever read the Gospels or the Bible, you know this about God. It says in the scriptures, God cannot be mocked. He views it, I gave my life on the cross to save yours so that you could be a part of me again because. We have that bond. And um, 
if you weren't planning on going to heaven to be with Jesus Christ, well, Jesus Christ is heaven. You wouldn't like it. It's, it's not like two car garages with every car you've ever wanted and it's way more than that. It's being with Jesus Christ, learning and feeling his presence and being loved. And it's a relationship. And how you treated him on earth is how he's going to treat you. It's not eye for an eye. It's I'm pausing because the Spirit's telling me, don't get too scary on him. Jesus Christ learns all about you. Knows intimate things, and I don't mean sexual, but like things from um, when you were little, to medium, to taller. Has everything planned out for you. Crowns, thrones, everything. And this is what Paul never understood. <clears throat> but there is condemnation if you are not following the Holy Spirit. Because you are not then made in the likeness spiritually of Jesus Christ. Spiritually, you are dark. And if you are spiritually dark, you won't like heaven. I have tried so many times to bring people that just don't crave and love the light into heaven and they have thought it was a living hell for them. And I have brought some people in and it, they couldn't stop smiling and laughing and their lives just transformed and all kinds of things happened. There are two different types of people. The question is, how do you crave the light over the dark. Well, the darkness is just anything that destroys you. That could be your love for money and what that causes you to do in order to get it so that you get what you're really ultimately after, which is love, which goes back to when that right. Yeah. <clears throat> Satan. I told him, God has a wife for you. And I described to him what real love was. I showed it to him. And he was like, I've never known what love is. And I was like, well, this is what love is. And he was like, I want that. And I was like, even better. God has a woman for you that will, she's going to challenge you at times, but she will love you. Like, for real, for real. And he's like, who, well, who is it? And I was like, well, she's already in your life. And he's like, is it this one? Is it this one? Is it this one? I'm like, you have to follow the Holy Spirit. That's what Christians do. I'm not going to give you everything. You have to come to my side. Christians go through it. And the biggest thing is he wanted everything the Christians had. But he didn't want to go through the discipleship uh, program that Jesus Christ wrote down in the scripture. And that's how you get to heaven. Jesus Christ said it. I am the way, the truth, and the life. The way is documented in his teachings. And the scripture says the Lord does as he pleases. 
and that God is always good and his mercies endure forever. New mercies are given every morning. So it's not like God hasn't attempted to shake people awake and be like, look. And um, it wasn't a battle at all because God already knew everything that everybody was going to do. He did not create one specific spirit just to suffer. The parable of the prodigal son is about Satan. And I've used that to illustrate um, other people around me, you know, use that to kind of say, I know how it feels because I know what heaven's like. I'm trying to get you guys into it. And there has been times where God looked at the earth and the scripture says that he's sorry he created man and he didn't even want to exist. <clears throat> because it impacts him. He's the big spirit connected to all the little spirits and the emotions and pain they go through, he feels. And then he has seven different spirits so he can kind of be like, that's too much. I need some of me now. Because he's also giving you his joy and his peace and his strength for situations. And then he sometimes he's just like, well, now I'm only going to shift it over here to the people that are trying. Of course, that's going to have ramifications across the earth. But he also knows who is going to kneel. And then as soon as you kneel and you submit and you say, Lord, my life is yours. Get him a robe, bat a calf, put a ring on his finger. And what that symbolizes, we are remarried. And I'm not even worried about your indiscretions and all of that. I'm just glad you're home. So, yeah. all right, so that's all God wanted me to say.